Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamu alaikum everyone. Today we are going to conduct lecture number 49 and today we will learn about timer interrupt programming or what is timer interrupt so and how to program it. So let's start our lecture. Okay, before we start our topic which is timer interrupt programming, we need to consider some of the facts which we have already learned. So if you remember when we were programming timers, we were actually setting some values in timer 0L and timer 0H register. For example, let's say uh, we are programming timer 0 in 8-bit mode. So timer 0L register will be initiated with certain value. Let's say it was initiated with, let's say, if F uh, D, right? So what is going to happen uh, once we are going to start the timer, it will actually become F E, right? and then eventually it will convert into FF and then it will convert into 00, zero or which it will exceed to, uh, it will reset to its initial value, right? And that point is called rollover point if you remember, right? Uh, that was very important. Remember we are actually considering timer zero in eight bit mode. That is why the maximum value is double F and the minimum value is zero, zero. Otherwise it could be four times F and four times zero in 16 bit programming, right? Uh, so what is this point when FF converting into zero zero that is point is called rollover right if you remember rollover is one is very important step which actually lets you know that timer has expired right so rollover point and it was indicated with the help of uh, a very important bit that was basically timer zero uh, IF right so timer zero IF would become equal to one whenever this rollover happens right. So that timer zero IF is very important and we know that it is initially zero and whenever timer expires, uh, this timer zero IF becomes one. So this is the point uh, which can actually convey uh, notification to microcontroller. But how we were testing this uh, when we were not doing in any interrupt programming, we were actually creating a, uh, a test, bit test file, skip if set and interrupt control register was used and it's bit timer zero IF, right? So we were testing this uh, flag of uh, this register interrupt control and we were consecutively uh, monitoring this step unless this becomes one and we come uh, out of this loop and uh, we actually can do any other thing. So microcontroller was busy uh, continuously in this specific task that it will monitor uh, this flag and unless this flag becomes one microcontroller will come out of this loop. So this is something uh, which is called polling. And here we are going to perform this thing uh, automatically using interrupt, right? So interrupt programming, uh, we won't be monitoring it. Rather, there will be an alarm or there will be some notification which will appear or which there will be an which will let microcontroller know that uh, that timer zero has expired and rollover has occurred, right? So how to uh, configure that timer zero interrupt, uh, we are going to learn in this lecture. And this is the polling method that we are not going to use here. So we will be actually considering some other stuff. And what is that stuff? If, if you remember in the last lecture, we have explained uh, a logical gates chart and this, uh, this is again that chart, but now we are using some individual gates, right? If you remember, that is our main uh, vector location interrupt and which can be enable and disable with the help of this GIE bit, right? If you make it zero, so all the interrupt will become equals to zero because they will end with this zero bit. And if we make it one, so uh, in an interrupt will be enabled. So this OR gate output will eventually uh, will flow towards the output terminal, right? Uh, and if you remember in this OR gate, there was number of interrupts were shown uh, earlier in uh, last lecture, timer zero, interrupt zero, interrupt one, interrupt two. But in this lecture, we are just considering one uh, end gate and that end gate is basically the input is what timer zero IF. This is the same bit, right? So whenever roll happens, rollover happens in timer zero, what is going to happen? It will become one. But there is one more uh, kind of switch uh, in this end gate. It's another terminal. Uh, which is timer zero IE. So this is another kind of enabling uh, or specific enabler of timer zero interrupt, right? So if you make it one, then this rollover value will actually flow towards the output, right? But if it is zero, 
then what is going to happen this timer zero if notification or this rollover notification won't come out right because since it is zero so output will remain zero so how actually uh, you can enable it you have to enable this bit as well or you have to make this bit is equal to one right so in this lecture we will learn where we can find this timer zero ie or timer zero interrupt enable bit right what is this timer zero interrupt enable bit and that is timer zero if right so if i remove it this is flag and this this one is interrupt enable right and both of these registers are actually find found in interrupt control register this is this is basically our interrupt control so this is our interrupt control register and like any other pkdnf registers uh, this register has eight bits and one of the eight bit is basically timer zero interrupt enable and one of the bit is timer zero interrupt flag so if one want to enable timer zero flag then he has to actually write bit set file uh, interrupt control right timer zero ie if it is enable then there will be uh, one on this specific bit right so if rollover happens uh, flag will become from uh, from zero from zero to one so this output will flow here and this output will eventually come here and this bit should be high also so gi is also present if you remember where bit set file interrupt control comma gie you need to be very careful to remember these things that where GIE is present, GIE is also present in interrupt control register, timer zero IE, it is also present in interrupt control register, right? Similarly, in timer zero IF, it is also part of timer uh, interrupt control register, right? So if we are configuring uh, what should be status of timer zero IF, initially it should be zero because uh, otherwise we won't have its notification. So it should be, let's say initially, but clear file interrupt control, comma timer zero if so in this way initially timer zero flag will be low and timer zero ie should be zero so initial status of uh, timer zero should be what this bit is zero this is one uh, this is also zero right and this will become zero and this will be one right so what is what is going to happen whenever timer expires this bit will become equal to one one into one will be ended that will become one one will lead towards here since it is a or gate so this output this input doesn't matter right so one will uh, anyway come here and this will become one and one into one it will become one so it will notify the microcontroller that interrupt timer zero interrupt has arrived or interrupt has arrived right uh, then it will switch to the interrupt vector table and uh, check which one of the interrupt has interrupted the microcontroller, right? Okay, this is what uh, related with the timer zero interrupt. Uh, but what are other gates shown in this uh, uh, chart or in this diagram? This part, right? This part is another part. If you remember, this is basically another part and that is the second OR gate, which we saw earlier. And this second OR gate has number of inputs available. Last time we saw timer one, timer two, transmission, reception. But in this program, in this lecture, we are just covering what timers interrupt. So that is why we are just showing timer interrupt. So timer one, uh, IEF flag, timer I, timer one IE flag, timer two IEF flag, and timer two IE flag. So both timers can also be enabled like timer zero, and they can eventually arrive to this OR gate. But this is again a conditional statement here or a conditional check here uh, using this gate, right? Using this gate. So uh, this PIE input, right? This PIE input is very important. You have to also make this uh, bit equal to one if you want to uh, enable the timer one and timer two interrupt. So this P -E PIE or peripheral interrupt enable is present in PIR1 register, right? So if you want to make a uh, high or if you want to make it one, so similarly timer one and timer two interrupt flags are present in PIE1 register, right? So these registers, uh, I will show a summarized chart in another lecture in which you can find where you can find these bits. But uh, what is important, you need to know uh, if you are, uh, turning on or or enabling an interrupt of certain timer you have to uh, turn on 
uh, various enables points. So if we are enabling, let's say timer two. So timer two IE should be one. Then this PIE bit should be one so that this end gate produce output. And then this GIE output should be one. Similarly, if we are interested for uh, let's say timer zero. So timer zero, ti this should be high and this should be high. So this will eventually uh, flow this timer zero IF bit to the output. Okay, that's it from this lecture. If you have any confusion and questions, you can post them in comment section. Thank you so much for listening.